This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze each and every one of them. Thank you for staying with us. My name is Elsie Godwin, and as usual, I'm here with Beniak and Ewa Oluwa Hi, Elsie. I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. Hi, Ewa. I'm good. You're good. You sure you're good? Mm. Okay. <laughs> Seems you're missing your night? bae. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My so you're missing your bae. Hmm. Oh, okay. I don't have thought that was a boo. Oh, oh. it's is bay. Okay, bay boo. Bay boo. Boo bay. So boo is for male. I th yeah, I think that's bay what it is. Bay is for female. Yeah. No. Oh so really? I think it's for anyone anyhow. It for anyone. Okay, that's fine. Oh, Whatever good. works, that's fine. For anyone else, yeah, you can use it for anyone. So this this the mood you're in when you're missing bay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on to the story for today. Nigerian singer Simi has shared her opinion on the stress of being expected to cater to the same audience with her music, stating that um, this unfortunately is the state of Nigeria music industry. In a series of Twitter posts, she noted that Nigerian artists are expected to mostly cater to the same audience, and for this reason, she takes very few music pundits, in quotes, serious. She said, and I quote, I think one of the most trying things Ninja artists deal with is that we are mostly catering to the same audience. We don't want to have to, but the structure of the industry makes it inevitable. We expect the same people to to like rap, street music, soul, pop, indie. It is strange. So when I see someone tell an artist you are monotonous, it amuses me. Most of the legends are monotonous. Un unless they don't have a sound. Imagine Fela doing hip hop today and R&B tomorrow, LOL. Or Whitney Houston, so today, Apala tomorrow, end of quote. Mm. Okay, so. I'm not sure I quite agree with yeah, her. But but maybe I don't agree with her. Okay. It's, it's, it depends on the artist. It depends on what you want to do. I mean, we have artists like Bonaboy that is stuck with his craft and now he's paying up for him. It's not about the audience now, it's about you and wanting more for yourself. Mm. But, but who is Bonaboy Ketron to? That's what Simi's saying. They're all fighting for the same crowd, for the same audience listening to them. Yes, the same music is universal. Mm -hmm. So I seem to understand what Simi's trying to say. All right, the same people who will listen to an Adekone Gold music will listen to a Simi music. The same people listen to a Bonaboy music, the same people listen to a Whiskey and a Davido music. So it's like we're all trying to cater to the same audience. Now, what you're trying to say, this is where diversity comes to play. Your style of music, your form of music. Mm -hmm. the, the core people, your style of music will definitely cater to. Mm -hmm. But there might be general acceptance, mass appeal. But at the end of the day, there are certain people that if it's not semi music, then it's no music at all. Well, but then if, if you're taking it from that angle, music, then I no feel Bonaboy like it is the artists that do not understand or respect the audience. That's so it. Because they this feel, problem is not from they feel the, we artists the audience. Feel, no, the it's artists not. feel. It's not. They are the ones they, they, they that don't the understand need targeting. For mass acceptance. And it's not know, supposed to be that not way. Be that. It's so, a, no, that's what I'm saying. The yeah. problem is with the artist, not, not the audience. Not the audience. Is you understanding what people want? Or, okay, I want to put out a music out there, but I want this music to be for just this particular set of people. Or I don't need everybody to accept me. I mean, not everybody was accepting Bonner Boy's music. I actually feel it's a case of understanding your own craft and your own sound, and then watch it grow on your fans or people who love that kind Let's of music. Let's use Akpala as an example. Mm -hmm. It's sticking to the Akpala. Um, Hip hop, pop up, well, how does he call it? Yeah, and yeah, he calls it, yeah. And trust me, it's doing well. It's not trying to be like somebody else or trying to go into RB or some street music. It's when you and begin to expect that because you sing Alte, for example, mm -hmm. it has to be accepted by everyone in the mainstream, then that is where the problem is. So I think she also is a bit confused in what she's saying. Mm -hmm. I get the part where she's saying um, she doesn't, she takes few music pundits serious because I've seen reviews on music and they tell you this is the same sound we heard from you before you are still doing the same thing we want them and i don't know why you are trying to tell an artist to diversify his sound if he doesn't want to diversify his sound mm. the point is are you enjoying the work he put out at this moment is that his sound um let's bring world into this if you check what's album from beginning even this um i love girls with trouble mm. that he did with size you would 
if you wake up tomorrow and listen to a song, you know it is world. You had to bring yeah. your world in. I it? had to bring your world it's into cool. it. It's great. Um, who else are we bringing into this? Johnny Drill is staying true to his craft, mm -hmm. and he—I mean—he sold out a show of about five thousand capacity. And Bez, Bez Dakula. Bez, they're mm -hmm. doing it, so it yeah. is because you want to look at a. Who do I use as an example? You want to be a whiskey, mm. but. Should I bring religious soul grace into this now? Everybody cannot blow the same way. As long as you have it's a crowd. As long as you have everybody cannot be. As long as you have a crowd, you have your audience. Mm. Respect that audience. The fact that I listen to Simi does not mean I don't want to jump to Zlatan sometime. You, know. you cannot tell me, oh, because I say I love Simi or I love Ladipo, then I have to listen to Everywhere only I go. I mean, I'm going to a club, so Simi, I might not yeah. be able to listen to a Simi or a Ladipo. But when I want to listen to good music, the kind of music I want to vibe to, then I'll look for the artists I love and listen to their songs. So you cannot say I have to. Listen to Alte and say, "Oh, my life is Alte." Really, mm. that can that must be a very boring life. <laughs> I will give it to Nigerian music industry because for a very long time it was hard to define our style and music. There are different genres of music. And I think every artist should be able to find what their genre of music is, what their style of music is, what is their distinctive, mm -hmm. and stick with it. I stick with it. Not everybody is going to sell out the O2 Arena. Not everybody Thank is going to sell out a co hotel. For some people, your crowd is just. In a small space, mm -hmm. just so the people who appreciate your music. So I think the quest for this, similarly, I want to blow, is making artists diversify into sounds that is not originally theirs mm -hmm. because they want to appeal to the masses. They want yeah. everybody to accept and them. So the problem they is with them, not the audience. You know, because it's so, not their yeah. style. Now, way back, I, I rock with music like Boyz II Men. I love them because of their unique sound. If a Boyz II Men should start playing right now, I know it's Boyz II Men because there's a feel, there's a flow, there's a mm. style, there's a rhythm and melody and harmony to their sound. Mm -hmm. And so, if I begin to hear one artist begin to do different, you want to do Akbala sound, you want to do rap, you want to, I feel you're confused about your craft. Mm. Stick with what your style of music is and you're definitely going to have people who vibe to you. But where you want to blow, and one mass acceptance, then what Simi is saying is, is very cogent. Mm. I mean, the other day we were talking about nice, that he left the old nice vibe, the old vibe we had, and then he was trying to. There was, keep there was up a level of the, indigenousness, yeah. and people it really was, liked it. It was, like it, was, it was like it was chanting, it was, it was you know, making some enchantment. And now, and now if, that he's trying to go with the flow, it's not working for him. And personally, I feel like if nice can give us another album that or a song that is close to what we used to have the gongwa sauce and mm. all that i kind of feel that he will get back to being one of our early stars i don't know but I that's my personal you. opinion mm. okay before we go on to the next story we need to go for a very quick break and when we come back we'll definitely carry on this conversation Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I see them every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Right now? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And plus TV Africa, we feeling good. No time to die. Everybody feeling alright. Still buy. Sometimes I look myself, minimal are you? Mm. Akpala music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, woo! Sleeping early, sleeping early. Welcome back. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Kanye West reveals plans to release second Christian album. He took to social media to share a picture of him and Dre with the caption, Ye and Dre, Jesus is King, part two, coming. Okay? I feel bad I've not been able to listen to the first one. I, think I, just, I don't know I if I'm supposed to say it. that, yeah. but I'm um, having issues with my Apple store. So I, I, I love being able to listen to it from beginning to the end without having to search and find, you know, once I just key it in. But I think I'll be able to get that done very soon. And I have. Um, it was great. I liked it. But then I think Kanye should just calm down and let us enjoy this part one. We're not even done with it. Mm. I mean, someone like you have not even listened to it. Mm. He needs to calm down and let everybody enjoy this one first before they start dropping another one. Come on, it's looking like Kanye wants to make some money off of it. No, but it's okay if he's making money off it. I mean, mm. I, I was privy to the 
is attending Joel Austin's church, mm -hmm. and it was a fantastic moment. I'm like, okay, for those who are still in doubt of Kanye's being true or false, I mean, mm. this is all up in your face, you know. And during that service, there was a track that was played from um, the, the first album, the part one mm. album, and the whole crowd went gaga with it. I'm like, okay, Kanye is definitely reaching out. Yeah. And so if he feels the need to bring out the, the part two and he's working with a legendary producer, uh -huh. Dr. Dre, I mean, you know, it's going to be epic. Now, yeah. I'm just wondering what some people will feel. Okay, it's, it's, it's a Christian album. Why is he working with Dr. Dre and all that stuff? We're pretty stereotyped in this, in this zone. And so for Kanye, I'm a big fan. I think Kanye is in a zone and not everybody's going to understand him. Um, critics are going to say, hey, he's doing this for political reasons, he's doing this just for the attention of it. Mm. Either way, Kanye is in a zone, and I think something is up with Kanye. Mm. It's, it's, it's not what anybody can explain. It's not ordinary. Yeah. And so yeah, let's yeah, just, I've always said it yeah, on this it. table so that we, all, we see something yeah. we're not saying. Yeah, Somebody's telling him something oh, yeah. everybody's not listening you know. to. And it's just him alone that can. So it's looking like it's crazy, but I know that there's something up with him. However, you know that Kanye dropping these tweets does not mean that that album is coming out soon. Even when we knew that his thing exactly. was coming out, we had to like wait and wait and wait mm. and he tell you oh, I'm fixing something. So this is just the beginning. So I think. I feel we have, if not, it's at least nothing less time. than six months to one year to wait for this album. And or, Kanye or can less. always pull a Kanye on us and drop it in like That's two it, or less. That's Kanye. <laughs> okay, we'll see how that goes. So, moving on to the next story. Singer Tenny, the entertainer, shares her encounter with Tiwa Savage on flight, which left her surprised. According to Tenny, Tiwa Savage surprised her yesterday. Or did they... Okay, let me just quote her. Tiwa Savage surprised me yesterday. Did not know she was on the plane. She stood up from where she was to come say hello to me. Thank you for honoring me. God we honor you. End of quote. That's mm. so Yoruba. Like, that's a good prayer. Allah Akmoy. Yeah, I mean, that, okay. that, that, that yeah. last part there, that last bit, they're like, okay. It was so extra. Mm. Yeah, it was too extra for me. Mm. You're like, this is a Teddy. You are a phenomenal singer. You're a phenomenal artist. Check. Mm -hmm. And so this is, this is greatness because we got to give props to Tua Savage. Mm. She is the African diva. Nobody's going to take that away from her. Mm -hmm. All right, um, Tiwa, Tiwa has mastered her creativity. She's one of those artists you can reckon with in, in the African continent. Oh, yeah. And I dare say she's actually, if we were to say what Beyonce is to the world, that's what Tiwa is to the African continent. And so her coming over to you to say hello to you because she recognizes you as mm -hmm. also as a phenomenal, as a great you. artist. So I understand the humility, you know, and Tenny was try trying to portray there that me, Tiwa, you know, mm. but this is it. She recognized your craft. It's your craft. She's she's paying respect to him, not necessarily your you. your person. Mm. You know, until so, um, now you now saying um, God will honor you. That's a little bit extra. I guess that's <laughs> the, that was the euro buying you doing yeah. that thing. Yeah. But so well, then I think fine. I think it's okay for her to feel that way, to be humbled and add her euro ness into it because it just speaks to the. You know when people are trying to inspire you and they tell you when you're working hard to become who you want to be, it's really lonely. Mm -hmm. But when you get to the top, even people that you would not expect um, to come to you would be the ones to come to you. So that's Everybody basically what's happening. Tenny is big right now. So mm -hmm. Tiwa would definitely yeah. want to share with Tenny, even want a collaboration with oh, Tenny. Yeah. Because yeah. having a collaboration with Tenny is also making sure that your relevance still remains. Mm. So she has something that would make Tiwa get up to come and say mm -hmm. hi. Like, mm. a she wouldn't get up to go and greet a regular person. Yeah. We had well, the issue of Charles <laughs> and Azodo, right? Yeah. And I mean, Charles and Azodo is the veteran in his own right in sports, but Tiwa has no business in sports. So she is very possible. She doesn't know who Charles mm. Hanazzo is. is. And we had that conversation on this table. So I think it, this, the lesson I'm taking away from this is for us all to just learn to work hard on ourselves and mm. be that person that the people who feel they are the top will realize that they need you and there's value in your craft. That's just it. And congratulations to Danny. That's what I'm going to say about this yeah. one. Let me give you a backstory quickly. Mm -hmm. um, 2016, there's this lounge I used to go to. I used to chill at Fulao Sibo. Um, Tenny was a hype man. In that, in that club. Oh, wow. And a friend, my friend owned the lounge, so he introduced me to Tenny, that, hey, Benny, I know you work on radio. This girl is good. Listen to her music. See what you can do with her. I'm like, okay. Tenny and I had a few time to talk. In 2016, mm. I listened to her music. She said, she said, bro, nobody wants to take me seriously. Nobody wants to manage me. This is just 2019. Mm. And I look back like, okay, Benny, what didn't you see? You know, I just mm. said, I decided at the end of the day, don't ever undermine anybody. 2016, mm. she was a hype man in a lounge looking for somebody that will pay attention and listen to her music. 
today, um, the, she's the, big. the story is different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's big. She's really big. So for me, <laughs> this is congratulations to Tenny. Nothing mm. more. And I love your Yorubaness. Please keep it up. God, we all know you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, moving on to the next story. Mr. P addresses domestic violence in a new video for his single, um, Too Late. In the video, Mr. P addresses how toxic masculinity infuses domestic violence. So, yeah. I think this is a good one. Mm. Um, we need more men to come out and have these conversations. I like how he tried to drop the toxic masculinity into it. I know the conversation for domestic violence has been ongoing, mm. right? But um, I think we are not addressing the inherent problem when it comes to men. And it's not because we don't, well, maybe some people don't want to address it because they are more focused on the female folks, but they are also people that genuinely want to have these conversations with men, but they are not open enough to talk about it. Yesterday was International um, Men's, Men's Day. Day, and I think most of the tweets I saw and messages that was going out um, was about how men should be more open and share their worries, like mm. not whole things. So I like how he's trying to, he tries to bring those two together to say that if you don't handle this, then this is what could come out of, hand, of not handling this. You mm. know, so kudos to him, and um, thank you for that one. Yeah, I mean, after I sent the video, I just knew that there was a lot of sense in that video because mm -hmm. it was able to, you know, you can't address, uh, when there's an issue, yeah, I like that everybody's speaking one part and they're addressing it. One person cannot see all the all wrong. And it, it came from the um, aspect of peer pressure. Mm -hmm. When you're with your friends, they tell you to do this to your wife or do this to your girlfriend. At the end of the day, they're not doing what they're preaching to True. you. Mm -hmm. and. When the story ends, you're the one losing, and I think that happens a lot winning. online. So because people come online to tweet, to tell you, and you know. But the, in fact, I can remember clearly. I think this was three years ago. Someone I know. It was um, close to Valentine's period, and mm -hmm. he went online. I was like, "Please, don't stress yourself to buy anything for any girl. Like, if if she if she knows you, if she understands that you love her, you don't need to prove it on Valentine's Day." Blah 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 blah. But this guy pulled the most awesome surprise for his, his girlfriend, girlfriend of like he didn't get to the media i mean we but get he was a there lot of that you know making people feel like they shouldn't go the extra sometimes mile for their like, partner how, how did these people get to social media because they just come and tweet all the all, all sort of things um you should eat your girlfriend it's okay you that's should your girlfriend. yeah some people, people come, come on people come on social, come social media, media. Yeah. yes people right, do let me, it let me quickly say this right here right um the issue about men would be inexhaustible for society to do with it to take to take like a whole other show mm -hmm. now let me say this um the society we live in we did talk about this sometimes earlier this week it's a patriarchal society whereby there's this box that has been created to say it is a man's world mm -hmm. and that represents everything that is adverse to the woman for men who have the guts to put their finger on a woman understand is that we as men We've been told over the years you can't express emotions, you can't mm -hmm. show emotions, you can't cry, because if you do that, it shows you're weak. So there's so many men who are damaged, so many men who need healing, so many men who, who are fighting with their identity. Mm. Every time a man lifts his hand and beat a woman, that's a man that doesn't understand himself, is dealing with a whole lot of issues, that is himself. And he feels, you know, by expressing that might over the woman, I'm expressing my masculinity. Mm. Underneath that masculinity, it's a broken man. It's a man who has a whole lot of fears. It's a man who doesn't really know himself. He's fighting with who really he is, mm. you know. And so until society allows men to be men who can express emotions, you know, and we deconstruct this myth about the man is meant to be strong, is not meant to express emotions, um, he, they feel every time they exercise that might over a woman, it's some kind of, gives them the feeling that, you know what, I am the man. Mm. And I say this to my friends, that if you ever live with a woman as a man and you have, always have to vocalize and say, I am the man of this house, then just maybe you're not. Mm. Because if you are, you don't have to vocalize it. You don't have to say it. And so, for every woman who is going through physical abuse at home, in a relationship, know that you're dealing with a man who is damaged, who needs help, who needs healing. And until society allows men Mm -hmm. to really express themselves and be men and say, so you know what, I am weak. I'm not a superman you think I am. Mm -hmm. This will continue. So, and in understanding that he needs help, you're not the one to provide this help for him. No, you're yeah. not. You no, it's there not you. Until it's you are there yeah. because you're trying to you. help him. So mm -hmm. understand that you need to help him get help, but That's you don't it. have to be help him mm -hmm. get help. in that space no. where you are the you're punching bag. You're a victim bag. already. 
Suppression works. You're actually. a victim and as, Aside that, I mean, parents has to do um, has a lot of work to do when it comes to this. So when you see elder brother the eating their child. younger sister, the boy mm -hmm. child eating Focus their... Focus should be placed yeah. on the boy child. Yeah, like, don't tell them that it's your elder brother, it's okay for him to eat you and, and you do need to stop... people really say that? Yes! <laughs> say that a lot and I mean is your other brother is okay if he's eating you that's why some men will not see it so wrong to, to eat kiss their wives or I mean. their girlfriends okay I think we've changed your life a bit today so moving on to the next story <laughs> Jaru is officially off the hook in lawsuits over 2017 Fire Festival. Helping to promote and organize the concert landed him in illegal trouble in the fallout that resulted after the festival was cancelled. A New York judge sided with Jaru and Fire's chief marketing officer Grant Magolin, discussing the lawsuit against them. Sorry, dismissing the lawsuit against them. Court um, documents reads, and I quote: "There is no assertion that the festival, when first conceived or introduced to the public," was intended not to go forward or that defendants intended not to perform by the organized by organizing the advertised amenities and accommodation end of quote so i think this is congratulations to jaru mm, and the judge is so smart mm. yeah because i watched the documentary yeah, I did too. and when it started it wasn't a fraud mm -hmm. it was along the line well, when i started watching wrong. it i was looking forward to the, to the festival until I got to some point I'm like, okay, this people yeah, it was at one point that wrong. something went wrong. Mm -hmm. So everybody that was part of that project thought that it was going to be a reality. Mm -hmm. She gets so it's, you can't blame you can't blame someone that was promoting the show. I mean, at some point he felt bad too. He wanted to pull up, but it was too late and. The other guy was giving everybody courage that don't worry, we can that do this. <laughs> I'm telling you. So I feel like this is congratulations to Jaru and the judge. Thumbs up. You're so why, smart. why are you congratulating Jaru? Oh, he I also said it seems he's he's about to start um, preparing for something similar to Fire Festival. So Ooh. I'm hoping that it, it is successful and it's not a fraud because if it's a fraud this time, he will go to jail. Of course. <laughs> like just said, because, because this is not the first time something like this happening to Jaru. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm beginning to feel, okay, is this a, some kind of publicity stunt? Is Jaru trying to make a comeback? Because if he's trying to make a comeback, there's a poor script, you know? And so for me... No, I think this is um, way bigger than... Yeah, a yeah. comeback <laughs> is way bigger. Yeah, yeah I could it should, like... It should stay out of trouble. That's all. I mean, Jaru is so much of a big artist. Well, way back then for him to, to, to be med found meddling in this kind he of situation. Is, yeah. So it should just stay out of trouble. I mean, a lot of people got messed up in this situation. Mm -hmm. Kendall, um, Adid, a lot of celebrities but got I, messed up. I just up. know it that if he can pull off the next one he's planning, then it would be good for him and his brand. Let's if he hope. can pull it off. I think the, the guy in charge, I can't remember his name now, of this festival, the real Billy. guy. Billy. Yeah, he was, I, th I think he was so in his head. I, I, I don't know what is going on it in his head right now. It was just being stubborn. Their first problem was the location. The location. A simple rule. <laughs> Do not use Pablo to publicize this particular festival. And you decided to. And you decided and you decided to. to. And they told I mean, you, okay, go away. Go away. Now you so they to had a problem of getting... The money you're supposed to use for other things, you had to push it into building a new location. island. I mean, it's just... And building a new island is not a joke. It's not, it's not even it's realistic. To rush. In how That's many bad, weeks? Bad business decision right there. Yeah, so... Yeah. I'm looking forward to a festival. I mean, the woman, um, the cook, yeah? She's mm -hmm. the one that's supposed to get this money. I feel so bad for her, but everybody's lying. I'm sure she didn't lose up to that, but and a lot of people have reached out to her to mm -hmm. help her. Mm -hmm. Everybody will be fine at the end of the day. Okay, and that's how we wrap up this episode of Sea Time. Thank you for watching. And um, remember, you can catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Sea Time on Out to TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always go to my co-anchors, Ewa Oluwaritu and Benny Ag, and of course, the entire production team. My name is Elsie Godwin saying thank you for watching and be good.